hello. Is that working? Okay. Yeah, I'm Sister Patricia from Nigeria, a sister of St. Louis. I represent um, a founding member of COSUDO, that's the Committee for the Support of the Dignity of Women, also a member of ANAT, African Network, and Talit Akum. These are all religious networks that work to combat human trafficking. And um, I live in a shelter with the victims. Well, we don't like calling them victims, but unfortunately, that's what they are. We're the victims of human trafficking, you know, and we try to rehabilitate and reintegrate them. But let me go first to coming from a country of um, origin and a country of source. We put a lot of our energy into prevention. And that's one of the reasons why I came up with this book, Stop Trafficking in Women and Children is a Crime Against Humanity. We use them in schools, in churches, in youth fora, and we also go to marketplaces. And there's a, a manual, teacher's manual to go with this. Meanwhile, for the present, is being used in our schools. When I say our schools, I mean the schools of the Sisters of St. Louis. But fortunately, you know, NAPTIP, like when Mrs., uh, Dr. Mrs. Atiku was talking there, through her instrumentality and her position in government, the NAPTIB was born. That's the government response to fighting human trafficking, the national agency prohibiting the trafficking of persons. They are trying to get Nigeria to include human trafficking into the school curriculum. And we pray and hope that when that is done, then you know, we'll be able to teach it and tackle it at the roots. So that um, we'll be able to, at the moment, as I said, you know, we are doing all we can against human trafficking. And we pray that their work on prevention will be able to yield fruit. But our work in prevention is being frustrated. I personally feel frustrated because when you go to give talks and you take leaflets and you take flyers and you give it to these girls, they can carry your flyers and still go out. Why? Because we have not addressed the real issue of prevention. Because if we want to prevent them from leaving Nigeria, for example, from leaving the coast, leaving the shores, then we have to give them an alternative. And that alternative means they have to be empowered to do something. I was glad in the concept note of this program, we were told that poverty is a major ingredient in human trafficking. I know some people will say it's not really the cause, this, this, but it does play a significant role in human trafficking. And this is what these traffickers exploit. They exploit the vulnerability, they exploit the poverty, they exploit the ignorance of these poor young people. I would call them victims because of their vulnerability. But if we are able to empower them, to give them something, to teach them skills, and I think this is why otherwise we can talk from today till doomsday and nothing will be achieved. So that we really, prevention, we have to look at how do we prevent them from going out in the first place? How do we prevent them from falling Pray to these traffickers. Because if these girls have something doing, and they have a job, something that gives them satisfaction, I mean, they are not the only ones that the traffickers come through. But when the traffickers come, they'll be able to tell them, sorry, I have something doing. I will go when I can go in dignity. And, you know, like that, they will not be able to carry them away. So I think for us to prevent, we really have to empower them and when we talk of empowerment, I was glad, is it Myra, the EU person, spoke about it. You know, when we talk about empowering them after they have been abused, you see, you are no longer empowering a whole human being because they have been abused, they have been battered, they have been traumatized. Yesterday, coming from Sicily, honestly, what I saw on the streets of Catania, 
it will make anybody, especially the women, it will make your hearts bleed. You see this, many of them, we are Nigerian girls. That we are half naked because the weather is clement at this time. That we are practically naked. And when we were in the car, any time we approached them because they wouldn't know who was in the car, that we are trying to display, display themselves sexually so that the car... And I said, my God, are these human beings? Are these our children? I, I was very, very sad. So I really want us to do something on prevention. Preventing, not just awareness and sensitization, but empowering them so that they don't get out. And I have a request to make. And my request is this. As we are working very, very hard in the countries of origin to prevent our girls from coming, I'm requesting those in countries of de uh, destination, please prevent the demand. Because if you can prevent the demand, it's still useful. This economic day that where there is no demand, there will be no su supply. If you prevent the demand, and even if the girls come on the street and they stay and nobody comes near them, that automatically the thing will stop. We will not have them. And I believe that this can be done. Because if slave trade could be abolished in 1833, I think this modern day slavery to a great extent, but if we are sincere in what we are doing and we are not afraid, then it, by the grace of God, it should be achieved. Now, the next thing we do, as I said, we live in shelter, rehabilitating, reintegrating the girls. This second part, actually, I have a video clip. Maybe sometime the video clip will still be there. But what we do is that we go to the airport, meet the girls when they are being deported, some of them return voluntarily through some agencies like Slaves No More, so would in Germany, various groups. They'll call us and say that these girls are coming. We meet them at the airport. We bring them to our shelter. And when we bring them to our shelter, the first thing we do, we have a party. And we call that party No Place Like Home Party. Many of them come traumatized, but we tell them, look, once there is life, there is hope. Because they come empty-handed. And we tell them, don't worry, you will make it. There is no place like home. Thank you.